Well, you know, now, Betsy, this trial was not funded by the NHLBI. Uh, this trial was funded by a manufacturer of drug eluting stents. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the first things that a lot of readers do is look, could mm -hmm. that have influenced mm -hmm. the design of the trial in any way? Mm -hmm. What's your comment on that? I think two points are salient, Tom. First is the uh, trial design actually stacked the cards against the PCI intervention by combining both the hard endpoints of death, MI, and stroke, and the soft endpoint, a need for revascularization, into a combined primary endpoint. If, they, if the trial design had separated those endpoints, the primary endpoint would have been equivalent, and there would have been a difference in the secondary endpoint. So in other words, the, uh, the uh, device manufacturer in some ways stacked the cards against themselves. But the second important point is this study is an example of comparative effectiveness research, which is receiving a lot of attention uh, in Washington, D.C. these days. Comparative effectiveness research is a rigorous evaluation of two different types of treatments or two different approaches towards the same medical condition and evaluates the effectiveness of both of those approaches. We're going to see much more research in this area coming down the pike. But I think the, uh, the industry is to be congratulated for conducting this type of heads-on comparison in, in the manner in which they did. Uh, the pro-angioplasty uh, approach you know, points out the 1.6% higher stroke rate in bypass surgery. Mm -hmm. But when you really started looking carefully at you know, table three of the paper, which mm -hmm. has the outcomes in some detail, mm -hmm. um, the cardiac mortality is 1.6% higher in the angioplasty group mm -hmm. than the bypass group. The total mortalities are similar, but the mm -hmm. cardiac mortality is higher. Mm -hmm. Your comments on that? Yeah. Well, I, I think it's an interesting debate, Tom. On the one hand, cabbage led to more complete revascularization with a higher stroke rate. And I'd also point out a higher non-cardiac mortality rate. On the other hand, we know PCI leads to less complete revascularization, uh, perhaps a numerical difference in cardiac mortality, but a smaller stroke rate, and certainly easier on the individual in terms of procedure, recovery time, and other factors. I think subsequent studies will be looking at greater detail the differences between these groups and these factors, looking at cost effectiveness as well as quality of life uh, issues. It may be that we're really, what we're coming down to, Tom, is a d discussion between the patient and the, the medical and surgical team, really focusing on patient preferences, complexity of coronary anatomy, and potential risks and benefits depending upon their medical state and their comorbidities. Well, Betsy, there are a lot of unanswered questions, clearly, and you probably has as good or better insight uh, than anyone in the country about what's coming in the way of new trials to address those questions. So your summary of the big questions that need to be answered and the trials that might answer them for yeah. us? The NHLBI is now sponsoring the FREEDOM trial, which is a head-on comparison in diabetic patients between cabbage and uh, PCI. In this study, the primary endpoint will be the hard clinical endpoints of death, MI, and stroke, and need for revascularization will be a secondary endpoint. Uh, there will be uh, intricate neurological assessments at various times along the study so that we can get not only the stroke rate, but more subtle cognitive effects that might occur as a result of cabbage or PCI. In addition, we'll be looking at cost effectiveness and quality of life measures in patients receiving both uh, therapies. And finally, we'll have a four-year follow-up period uh, so that we'll be able to see the outcomes uh, at, over a longer period of time. So again, we need to understand, particularly in diabetic patients, whether cabbage versus PCI uh, achieves improved clinical outcomes. Well, you know, the, the issues are complicated. Medicine's complicated. And I think that uh, patients should have a chance to articulate their preferences and weigh the risk of stroke versus the risk of other kinds of outcomes. The syntax trial will surely make those discussions much more informed and probably make them happen much more reliably. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank you two for your comments because I think that they will help guide many of our audience members in those discussions. Thanks very much.